Shen Vinayak Goswami. In this chapter, we will write the shadow mapping shader, which will complete the incompleteness of our advanced lighting shaders. So, I have done some homework here. I have created lighting underscore IBL shadow shader, which is the duplicate copy of IBL Fresnel. I have so far changed the name of the shader so that I can apply it to the materials of this scene. So this is the change that I have made so far. Then the first thing we will do as we have been doing, we will add a property to turn on and off the shadows. We will label it shadow on slash off question mark. After that, we usually add the user defined variables, but as we understood in the previous chapter that we will have to add an additional pass here, which is shadow caster pass. And that's where we will add this pass. First, we will name this pass as shadow caster. And then we will add some special tags that are very important. So first is Q. Q will be opaque. And then we will add the light mode. And the light mode will be shadow caster. So these are the two tags that are needed for this pass. And then we will make sure that we turn on the Z write. We will have to write the Z buffer for this pass. And then we will turn off the culling. For now, we will turn off back and front culling. By default, the back culling is on. If you want, if you want more optimized results and you are satisfied with the visual quality of the shader, you can turn on the back culling. And then our CG program starts and it ends with end CG. And in here, we will define our vertex shader and the fragment shader. So first thing, hash pragma vertex is equals to word and hash pragma fragment is frag. So these are the function names that we will define. But before that, we will define struct vertex input what we will read from the mesh is float for vertex position. We have to read the position of the vertex so that we can transform it into projection space. And then vertex output. We will end the structs with semicolon. And in the vertex output, we will create a float for variable, which is SV underscore position type. And the name of the variable is position. And then comes the vertex shader. What vertex shader would output is the vertex output. And the name of the vertex shader is vert. What it would take is vertex input v and what we will do inside the vertex shader is we will create a vertex output variable which we will have to output and pass it to the fragment shader and then in vertex dot position we will store projection space coordinates by multiplying them with unity underscore matrix underscore mvp and multiply that with vertex position and then we will return o And then comes the fragment shader. Fragment shader will return a float for type value. What it would take is vertex output. And the return type is SV underscore target. This is important. We are not returning the color here. We are returning SV target. And then we can return 0 or 1 which is not very relevant because we are not drawing anything in this pass. So that's how we finish our 
Shadow Caster Pass. We save the shader. Let's go back to Unity to see if we have any compilation errors or not. So, so far, it looks good. We will go back to our shader and keep writing. And then we will come to our ordinary steps. Because we have used toggle, we will add hash pragma shader feature underscore shadow mode underscore off and underscore shadow mode is on. And then comes the user defined variable section. In the user defined variable section, when shadow mode is on, we will use a sampler 2D global variable which is shadow map texture. This is a global variable that can be shared between different shaders and we will use the variable to know whether the fragment is lit or not. Then comes the vertex input. We don't have to make any change in the vertex shader because there is nothing that we have to read from the mesh to cast the shadows. Then comes the vertex output. In the vertex output, we will create an extra variable that will store the texture coordinates that we will transform from projection to texture space in the vertex shader and then we will pass it to the fragment shader. So when shadow mode is on, declare a float4 variable which is shadow chord. And it will be a color one type variable because we have used color zero here. So now we have created a shadow coordinate variable which is of float four type. Then we reach to the vertex function. And after the step of storing O dot position, which is transformed value to the projection space, we will define our block of shadow mode. If underscore shadow mode is on and if. And we will store the shadow coordinate and we will transform using a function which is projection to texture space. O dot position and now we will declare this function the name of the function and the body of the function this function will return a float four type value it takes a float four type value as well and we will add a keyword here which is inline what does that mean is it's similar to copying the body of the function at the place of its call declaring the function as inline is a more optimized form of code because this makes the execution faster by removing the function call overhead so we don't have to call the function because the complete body exists within that block of the code so now we have declared it as inline. We will start writing the body of it. We will create a float4 type variable.